Greetings, I'm Rob Chappers. <laughs> and I'm the captain. And welcome to the ultimate Tiny Terror resource video of information. Yes, we are going to absolutely terrorise you. Yes. Over the next uh, 10 or minutes or so, or however long this we is. We have absolutely every single amplifier from the Orange Amplifiers Tiny Terror signature range production line. Captain Lee thought it would be a good idea to go chronologically. Uh, so we're going to kick off with the good old Tiny Terror and then work our way through the amplifiers in order that they came to us. And really, we're not going too deeply into all the features of these because they're, you know, with the exception of the Dark Terror that's fairly new, none of, none, of these are, none of these are brand new. So there are lots of other videos that you can go and watch if you want a really detailed one. But what we thought we'd do to give you guys an idea of, you know, if you're a blues player or a metal player or a clean player or whatever you are, uh, and you quite like the idea of owning a little kind of lunchbox style Orange Tiny Terror, or Orange Terror. The original Lunchbox yeah. style. Yeah, we do uh, a different, you know, all three styles, or those three styles of music through each head, uh, and then you can kind of decide which one your favorite yes. is. Yes, we'll leave it up to you. And maybe leave us some little messages in the comment section below to mm. tell us which you thought was your preference. Starting with the Tiny Terror. The original. Uh, yes, three knob Petit, très petit terror. <laughs> That's what the they call it in France. Don't love. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're, we're going to, yeah, like Lisa, we're going to keep them all at 15 watts, and um, we're going to give you clean crunch and gain. So let's kick off with yeah. clean uh, 15 watts tiny terror. Just, just to mention as well, uh, where the amplifier doesn't have an effects loop like this one, uh, you won't be hearing any reverb. Uh, but where they do have an effects loop, we are running a little if, uh, reverb effect through them. And typically speaking, what we're generally doing is you'll hear on each amp, you'll hear a sound where the volume's quite high but the gain's very low. You'll hear a sound where it's about 50-50 on each, and you'll hear a sound where the gain is very high but the volume's very low. Yes. And you can sort of choose how you think that the voicings work. We best. might include a bit of lead full volume on every one as well. Ooh. So as you'd expect, clean tones much nicer with the Strat. Well, just different. Um, well, yeah, different, I suppose. Yeah, I like the the uh, neck pickup on the Les Paul. Yeah. I thought that sounded sweet. Yeah. yeah, sweetness. So crunch. Right. So this is the sort of the fifty fifty mode. <laughs> Right, max. Well, not maxed out now. Three quarters gain, pretty much as high as we're likely to go. Thank you. 
So now we've got the hardwired Tiny Terra, uh, which is a an awesome amplifier. Tell us about this, Lee. Uh, it's essentially the a British-made version of the Tiny Terra we just played, but rather than using um, printed circuit board, it is hardwired. In other words, it is essentially just the old-fashioned way of making an amplifier. Point to point with mustard caps and all that malarkey. Absolutely. Um, so same kind of idea again, it's got exactly the same features though, so same volume, tone and gain control, no effects loop, uh, same size, a um, bit more money, um, in fact in terms of prices just go to Wobby 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 Anderton's Music Company. No, All just, the W's. What is it? www.andertons.co.uk <laughs> Why don't you stay as you are and crunch up? And then gain it. Gnar it. Some balls, hasn't it? It has. It, it sounds a little some bit ballage. more dynamic to me. It's sounding, uh, is it? I don't know about louder is not the right word. More open, maybe. Maybe mm. a bit louder, more open. It could just be psychological, and but it does sound yeah. more dynamic to me. Does it's it? not psychological. Our Maplewood Studio expert stick here is saying that it definitely comes across in the cans that there's more dynamic range and more yeah. um, openness to yeah, it. Yeah, no, it does sound. It's got some mojo. Let's hear it with a Les Paul. Les it up. Maximum ganage. Maximum ganagery. Run up to your amplifier and turn it up as loud as it possibly can go. That's a new invention of man pedal. You can just stamp on his foot and he'd run off and turn things for you and then run back again. <laughs> we're back and we're dual. We terror. are. We are twice as terrified as we were before. We are. Because uh, the next amp in the uh, Terror series is the dual Terror. Now, the Terror channel on this one was voiced with a little bit less gain to sort of answer the we want a bit more headroom on the clean sounds question. So this is what we're going to use for the clean tones. You may have also noticed the actual chassis is a bit bigger. It's probably about 50% bigger than a normal Terra. Yes. Good, there's two of them in there. A little bit heavier, but not yeah. massively heavier. No, not massively heavier. <laughs> A 
It's absolutely cleaner. Yeah, yeah definitely cleaner. More headroom. Mm. Right, we'll just crunch up the Tiny Terror a bit and then we'll go over to the, uh, the fat channel. <laughs> Awesome. Pretty juicy, though, I like that. isn't it? Yeah. I like that a lot. This is the fat channel with uh, kind of gain about halfway up here, so sort of medium gainy sound. <laughs> Staying on the fat channel, but uh, maxing the gain out a little bit. Thick and fat. There's a dilemma. I can't decide. Maybe I don't know if I like that more than the hand, the hard wired, or if I like the hard wired. <coughs> well, I like the functionality because you got mm. you could cook toast on that. <laughs> <Did you? laughs> I like the functionality of the twin channels and the sort of cleaner, crisper channel and the fatter, thicker channel. I think that's cool. And I think, um, I mean, the fact that you can switch between the two with the foot switch is really good. It's a real shame. There's no effects loop in there. Yeah. That was made it for me. It's the only one then that's foot switchable, isn't it, between two different If the hand wire Terra had an effects loop, I'd be all over that. The 30 watts, because yeah. we're using 30 watts on the dual terror, really give it a lot of low end, don't Yeah, they? a lot more bottom end, yeah, a lot I, more I, I agree. Half the game, fat channel. <laughs> That's really nice. Proper rock sound. Right. Yeah, okay. Might be my favourite so far. Can't decide. But do Next! Okay. We're back and we're black with the Dark Terror. Uh, probably the most exciting amplifier to come out of Orange in a long time it as is. far as I'm concerned. Um, this little bad boy uh, is an amplifier that I'd like to own. And you kind of think, because it's a gain monster, maybe it hasn't got the clean headroom. You know, maybe it doesn't do the crunch quite so nicely. Uh, we're about to find out. 15 watts. And Orange did say to me, out of all the uh, Tiny Terror ones, after you've tried the, you know, the Tiny Terror, the Dual Terror, you know, once you've tried the Dark Terror, they said, once you've had black, you never go back. <laughs> <laughs> Something else that's different about the Terror du Noir is that it has an effects loop, which is a massive plus to people like me who like to put all sorts of stupid effects to it. And we're using a little bit of reverb here. Do it! <laughs> It's a very nice clean sound. Yeah, it's a good sound. Very right. good. Let's uh, kind of 50-50 it yeah, with half and half, half, and half it. You, you, you can just hear the next stage preamp tubes go, oh, I'm in oh. now. Yes. Uh, hello. 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 <laughs> I'm in to do this. Yeah. <laughs> 
Because you've got the clean, you've got a good crunch, and then you've got the saturated gain with an effects loop. I mean, then what more do you need? Does a bit of does a bit of the blues as well, doesn't it? It does. Yeah, that's good. That's good. So far, my personal favourite. I think I'm still leaning towards the dual. The dual one. Yeah, I like yeah. the dual one. I think I like the fact that because it's 30 watts, it's just got a little bit more on the the, the bottom end. Mm. Um, I wonder how this would sound full volume. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly loud, <laughs> and it sounded very nice. I think it's fair to say that um, Rob likes the Dark Terror the most, so just to give him a bit of extra fun, we thought we'd get one of his signature guitars out to play through it. Welcome back, the ML1! We've got a secret one. Yes, because uh, you, for most of you, would be thinking, "Well, that's it. That's the Terra demo." Do that over. again. Well, hmm. you need a beard, dude. I do need a beard. Well, who thinks Lee should grow a beard? No. Yeah. Uh, Comment section. If I do grow a beard, it'll be patchy and red. Yeah. <laughs> red. Really? Yeah. Awesome, mate. Bit of fire face. Keskasai. Keskasai kasa. That is the Terra bass head that uh, Stick and I were abusing Ooh. last night. Yeah. And, um, Basically, I had an idea. I thought, well, Fender uses a Fender Bassman and it sounds really cool with a guitar in it. Why not try the Terra bass head with the guitar? And Through play a regular guitar cabinet yeah, as well. Yeah, played around last night, used the Telecaster and it sounded amazing and we were really surprised. Uh, we did put an overdrive pedal in front of it and of course it's got an effects loop. So I think for the first time, possibly, I might be wrong, but I think for the first time, this is a demonstration of the Terra bass head using some guitars and a guitar cabinet. <laughs> We 
don't normally do kind of amps that are good for this kind of tone, do we? No. But I must admit, if you're into your kind of, I guess if you've got a Les Paul or a big bodied kind of jazz guitar, things like that, this probably isn't a bad shout, something yeah. like this. Yeah. You would think it would be like all the EQ control and everything would be completely wrong, but it still kind of works, you know, for on an electric guitar if I want to, you know, it doesn't do like piercingly trebly sounds, but. Still plenty of treble there. Yeah, I mean, I was using the bass cabinets when we were playing around yesterday, and it was dark, but in a really good way, like stoner rock type sludge, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, with the guitar cab, you've got that treble there, haven't you? We'll wind up to the, the Telecaster in a minute, but this is, this is kind of with no overdrive pedal, this is just sort of, I guess, maximum sort of gain. It still sounds good, doesn't it? Yeah. This is what they call a hybrid amplifier. So this is the power section here isn't entirely tube on a on a bass Terra. Uh, so it's um, essentially a, a tube preamp section, but with a, a massive like 500 watt uh, output section. Yeah. So got heaps and heaps and heaps of headroom, uh, but it does give a different sound to obviously what you'd get out of a, a traditional um, you know all tube output. But yeah. This Telecaster sounds amazing. I think yeah. you should hear this. Well, the reason I thought the Telecaster would be appropriate is because obviously this is built for low frequency type instruments. So I did actually think seven string would be a good idea. Mm. But to compensate for the low frequencies, you've got a high frequency guitar and it sounded sweetest on the middle pickup, but I'll show you all of them. So here is, um, if we back off the gain. Gain, and you get this really cool thing going on. saying with stick um, yesterday was I think the ultimate Terra rig would be Terra base um, 412 PPC 412 <laughs> split in half and then a dark Terra the other side and for the kind of rock to sort of heavy metal stuff you've got an amazing crystal clean clear sound and then you've got the super darkness of the dark Terra I just want to put though oh. An overdrive pedal in front of this, just to show you the kind of tones we got using a very simple overdrive pedal in the front. Well, whilst Chappers is doing that, I shall also explain that you would think, or at least I would think, being a 500 watt amplifier in a little box like this, that it really ought to defy gravity and be impossible to pick up uh, like it was made of lead or gold or something like that. Uh, but those clever chaps at uh, Orange uh, use uh, a new, well, a relatively new style of amplifier called a Class D digital power section. 
and these are some of the most efficient um, lightweight power amplifiers uh, that ever been made. So actually the whole thing is still, you know, yeah, light. pretty lightweight. Stick. Here we go with our 49 pound Boss Super Overdrive. Yeah. SD1 Overdrive. This is not a Keeley modded one or anything like that. No. This is just a straight up regular Boss one. And it's still set the way we had it. So this isn't a, what I would call like a metal pedal. This is just like a nice classic rock kind of drive pedal, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, super cheap, affordable, nice, yeah. awesome pedal of doom. We've got the gain on the, the Terra base about three quarters of the way up. Uh, I did want to sort of say, do bear in mind, if, if you're loving these tones and thinking to yourself, oh, I think maybe I'll use a Terra base for my guitar rig, bear in mind that in terms of power output on the head, most guitar cabinets can't handle that kind of power. So just be careful when you're shopping around and putting your rig together, either you know, use a couple of cabinets with it so that you know you've got enough uh, handling to do it, or just be careful with how you put the volume. Or use the Terra Bass cabs, which we used, and they're dark, but they sounded awesome. Mm. Loads of punch. Cool. So here is, without this, nice affordable overdrive. That. Not me! <laughs> <laughs> into quite a nice sort of it's harmonic awesome. feedback, doesn't yeah, yeah. it? Play so, a bit of your blues lead, Lee. Okay. I don't, uh... Just high up, nice and shredding. It's awesome. Oh, well, there's a dilemma. So pick one. <laughs> pick one. Well, I think if you had a really good distortion pedal and a really good reverb pedal, you know what? I might even go for the Terra bass. Seriously. <laughs> I might do. On the other hand, I think probably the most practical is the Dark yeah. Terra. For, for someone like for you, me. like you. I still like the Dual Terra. Yeah. And, and that, to be honest with you. The Dual Terra and the Terra bass were yeah. the ones that really Very me. surprising, though. Very yeah. surprising. Yeah. Yes. So, there you go. Look. So hopefully now, if you you know you're a little bit better informed about uh, which Terra might be best for you. So you got any other questions about the uh, Tiny Terra, or you want to come and sort of shoot out some of these yourself? Don't forget Anderton's, your uh, friendly music store's got the whole Orange Terra range in stock, so you could come and have a little blast yourself if you wanted to. Or we ship mail order all over the world. So if you just want to, you know, if you love the sounds you've heard off of this uh, video and you just want to buy one, just you know. Yeah, make so. sure you, you give us your points of view on the, yeah. the, the different kinds of tariff and the range as well, because we're interested in what you think in your comments in the section. I below. think a lot of people probably, you should go read some of the comments that have already been placed, because I expect there's quite a lot of good debate going on yeah. there. In fact, what do you call it when a lot of people all debate together? You call that a forum. No, I set you up and you didn't do uh, it. I didn't, I didn't do it. What would you? It's oh, I saw some mass <laughs> debate. Right. On that note, <laughs> I shall say goodbye. Bye. Bye. <laughs>